In the 1570s, a king in the Deccan decided he had had enough of his manipulative mother and scheming courtiers who interfered in everything that he did. What he did next was unimaginable. Hi, I'm Minnie Menon and I'm going to tell you the bizarre story of a king who decided to take a break, a sabbatical, for 12 years. In history, fact can be crazier than fiction. The story of Murtaza, who later came to be referred to as Divana or Mad Murtaza, starts in the Ahmadnagar of the mid-16th century. This is one of the few images we have of Murtaza, a portrait that shows him reclining on his cushions while looking back with a smile. This gives us a hint of what Murtaza Nizam Shah was like spoilt and pleasure-loving. While this picture tells us a little about the man, what it doesn't tell us are the dynamics of power or the web of intrigue swirling around him and Ahmadnagar in the 16th century. Ahmadnagar was a seat of power of the Nizam Shahs. The Ahmadnagar Sultanate was part of a clutch of sultanates that controlled much of the Deccan. By the time of Murtaza's reign, he had a lot to manage internal intrigue between different factions of the nobility and external aggression as the four Deccan Sultanates fought pitched battles for control. Murtaza was the fourth Sultan of the Nizam Shah dynasty. He came to power in 1565 but within a year his mother took control acting as his regent. Over the next few years she made Ahmadnagar her fiefdom controlling everything. She got her family members from a powerful Turkic clan in Central Asia to hold important positions. Murtaza had little say. Instead, he was constantly compared to his father Hussein Shah, who had been a very successful and powerful ruler. All this led to great resentment and Murtaza finally connived with a section of his courtiers to take back the throne from his mother. He even arrested her and sent her to exile at the Shivneri fort near Junnar in Maharashtra. He was so angry with her that he later even erased her face from this portrait of his father Hussein Shah and his mother. But when Murtaza finally won his throne, he wasn't very good at ruling. Over the next four years, he made many mistakes. He sided with the wrong groups and then finally killed his most loyal and successful general. This was the last straw. Murtaza soon realized what he had done. That's when, frustrated by all that happened, he decided he had had enough. He left his kingdom at the hands of his Prime Minister Sahib Khan and then Salabat Khan and retreated to his estate in Ahmednagar. He lived here with a dancing girl who he married and today this is all that remains of his estate where a Nizam Shah ruler went into retreat in a sulk. By the 1580s, his later years, Murtaza was even more troubled. In fact, over time he became increasingly unhinged or crazy. Finally, he was killed by his own son. Murtaza lived in an important period of Ahmadnagar's history. He was surrounded by some powerful personalities and that is possibly why he couldn't deal with all the pressure. He was just not fit to take on the responsibilities or fill in the shoes of his father Hussein Shah, who was part of the confederacy that won the Battle of Talikota. Few people remember Murtaza today. Instead, you would probably have heard of his sister, Chand Bibi. Chand was everything that her brother wasn't. Though she was married to the Adil Shah of Bijapur, when Ahmadnagar was in crisis, under attack from the Mughals, it was she who came to fight for her father's kingdom and defend it with the powerful African general Malik Ambar. Sadly, that was a man's world. No matter how bad Murtaza was at ruling and no matter how capable or good his mother or his sister Chand Bibi might have been in running Ahmadnagar, it was Murtaza who was the Nizam Shah. Neither of the two ladies could hold their own.